Hello, Milan Mahadevan from 8451 here. Welcome to the special edition of The Upload. Today, we're going to explore a non-business related topic and discuss some of the other elements that make our DNA unique. This special edition episode will give you a sneak peek into the ethos of our organization and answer some of the listener questions we've received. So sit back, relax, and if you're so inclined, drop us a line and let us know what you think. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this special edition of The Upload by 8451. I'm your host, Dan O'Keefe. We're excited today to have with us uh, Tyler Ewer, data scientist with 8451, talking about uh, 8451's data science development program. Welcome, Tyler, to the upload. Thank you, Dan. Uh, so, Tyler, uh, you're a fairly new arrival here, correct? Um, can you tell us a little about your background and what brought you to AD 451? Yeah, so I just graduated in May 2019, fresh out of Notre Dame. Congratulations. And just, thank you. Just started here in, in June with the development program. But my story with AD 451 starts a little bit before then. So... Back when I was at Notre Dame, um, I was in the business school, mm -hmm. and I initially thought I was going to be studying finance at Notre Dame, being the business school. Mm -hmm. And we had to take a series of business classes my sophomore year, you know, management, marketing, accounting, right. the whole standard ones. And part of my mar marketing class, I had to go to this marketing speaker series uh, lecture. Mm -hmm. And uh, what that was is a series of companies came in uh, that the professors brought in just to give us a better understanding of what it would look like to work in the marketing industry. And, okay. and like I said, I thought I was going to study finance. So I don't remember exactly why I ended up at the lecture I did, but 8451 mm -hmm. was the one that I went to. And it really opened my eyes to um, the possibility of working in marketing. I had originally had like um, a perception that marketing was a little more creative mm -hmm. and I was a little more quantitatively inclined. Um, and I saw how, how much data that 8451 was able to work with and how interesting that could be. Um, I was always interested in data, just mm -hmm. um, my first interest in it actually came in like sports analytics, okay. like Moneyball, the, the Oakland A's, Billy Beans, yep. Oakland yep. A's. That, Great movie as well. Yeah, yeah. fascinated me. And um, when I saw 8451 working with all of the data that they had available and I I saw that I actually could work in data science and data analytics, gotcha. and it really fascinated me back then. And also, before I even came to 8451, um, after you know the interview process, got the offer and all that, I um, was getting excited about coming here, mm -hmm. and I listened to the upload, actually, uh, before of I course. came here. Hello. Yeah, I was listening to several episodes, and um, I was it was kind of a goal of mine to actually get on here uh, on the show, and here I am now. So. so to summarize, the reason you're a data scientist with 8451 today is because, one, you walked into the wrong lecture hall, and two, <laughs> you listened to the upload. Is that right? Sort of, yeah. I, right. I was, it, was, it was lucky, I guess, too, but it was... I'm really happy, though. That's great. Well, we're glad you're here. And what were some of the points made during that speaker series that really resonated with you? Yeah. So for one, like the fact that 8451 and like through Kroger has data on 60 million U.S. households, I, I just think that that boggles my mind. Pretty impressive. And yeah. like I said, I had this perception that marketing was more of a creative venture mm -hmm. and less data intensive. And that was clear. I was clearly wrong. And I'm glad I went to the to that speaker series to learn that. Um, another thing is the that we're customer centric here mm -hmm. at 8451. I, I think that's quite unique, actually. Um, the fact that we're trying to personalize a, a customer's experience here at 8451 with the data right. that we have, so we're trying to help them. We're not, you know, it's not like a manipulative sort of, yeah, we want to help in, them in find the consumer's products. best interest. In right? the consumer's best interest, right. Okay, great. And and after you decided to start 8451's data science development program, um, what was the application process like? Yeah, so um, it was pretty standard in terms of like, you know, just submit like resume, cover letter. Um, but one thing that actually was interesting, that I didn't see other companies doing this at Notre Dame, but we had a series of data scientists come out here to uh, Notre Dame actually mm -hmm. and hold office hours. And I was able to ask questions before my, like as I was applying and gearing up for the interview, like what what should I really be emphasizing in my application? Mm -hmm. Like what what is life really like here at 8451? Um, and I just got some of those key questions answered before I was 
actually applying That's and great. going okay. forward. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, what is life like now that you're at 8451 and in the data science development program? Yeah, so um, the data science development program is really unique and it's a four month long process mm -hmm. where you're going through a variety of different trainings and uh, key technologies you'll be using on a day-to-day -day basis here. For example, right. things like Python, R, mm -hmm. SQL, Tableau, Spark, Linux, thing, like the tools that you will need to actually succeed here. And you, you have about four months uh, in, of intensive trainings to actually, once you get placed on your full-time team, you'll be ready to go right off the bat. Right. There's also um, trainings on like business acumen, um, machine learning, data storytelling. So it's sort of like school in a way, but very focused on what you're going to be doing here. Right. Um, and there we also had a lot of applied learning opportunities as well mm -hmm. during the mm -hmm. development program, which I really appreciated. So I mentioned all of like, you know, those sort of classroom activities. <clears throat> and then we got to work as a team with other uh, grad data scientists like myself okay. and also some consultants on a case study um, with one of the pressing areas uh, of issues with the business right now. Mm -hmm. And we had a chance to work with all of the, the data that we have um, get used to actually using the tools and technologies. Um, and then after that, and having lots of uh, feedback sessions with the development program managers, we got placed into a series of projects as well in the project pool and placed on different teams throughout the business in right. which we then got a little bit of a flavor of, oh, what is it like to work on data science at scale? What is it like to work on on-site monetization? Um, so they gave us a lot of opportunities to expose ourselves to different areas of the business, different areas of maybe data science insights work, statistical learning, maybe right. a little more on the tech side. So there was a lot of feedback and um, iterations, I guess, of l seeing what you would like. And um, by the time the end of the program came, um, our managers had a pretty good idea of where they wanted to place us such that it would serve the business well, but also serve us to be happy too gotcha. with our new role. Well, and, and speaking of, of being placed and getting a taste of different business units and areas, in the midst of all of this, you moved your offices or you're actually your yeah. entire building changed, right? Yeah. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so... And you're, um, you're in the Chicago office. I am in the Chicago office. So it was interesting, like when we came out for the, the development program and right at the beginning, we had our first two weeks here to onboard and, you know, get get used to the culture and, mm -hmm. and so forth and to um, meet new people that the people would be working with uh, in the program. And then they sent us back to Chicago and... Um, in uh, the River North area, actually. And we, we were there for a few months. It was a little bit of a smaller space. But now we just actually moved to uh, a new office um, in November okay. in the old post office in Chicago. And it's pretty, quite magnificent. I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, pretty big deal. That's made some news. And uh, you guys are, are one of just a few of the inaugural tenants in that yes, building, correct? Correct. Great. Um, and that hasn't you haven't missed a, missed a beat, of course, uh, during the move. In doing no, I mean you know there's the normal like uh, you know starting up at a new place. Some technological uh, things can happen, but right. we figured it out. We're I think we're in a good spot. Great. Now. All right. Fantastic. So, what are some of the projects you've accomplished during your time with the program? Yeah. So some of the projects I worked on in the program. So the first one um, actually was with data science at scale. I mentioned them before. Mm -hmm. I was doing. Um, <clears throat> An, an analysis of the metadata that um, our data so that our data scientists uh, generate after using one of our internal packages. So data science at scale creates uh, an internal package uh, internally developed here. Something that would be similar would be like uh, pandas or numpy, but we ha we develop our own internal packages okay. across the data science function so that data scientists can you know um, use that package to do. Uh, tasks that are very common across uh, data science here at 8451. Right. Okay. So I was analyzing the data about how our data science are actually using the package, hmm. which I thought was kind of unique because I anticipated, you know, maybe analyzing more like Kroger data, for example, right. right from the start. But I was analyzing data about how our own data scientists were using our own tools, which was actually quite unique and it opened my eyes up to a whole world yeah, of data very science introspective, right? and yeah. tech that I never... Uh, really thought about before. So that that project um, allowed me to really upskill in terms of like software engineering knowledge that I didn't have coming out of the business, like coming out of a more of a business analytics mm -hmm. background. Um, and I really got more excited about like automation work and tech. So I was I was very fortunate to have been placed on that project. So your journey continues. And it continues. You keep, you keep learning new things, thinking you're going to land one place and end up in a, in a different place. Right? Yeah. So then after that, I, I do another project. Um, 
This one is in an area of the business called SCIE. I think it's, uh, so at that project, basically we build a machine learning model mm -hmm. that can predict sales at a store in a period, at each store we have in a period by period basis. But the problem is, and I told you we have so, so much data, yeah. when you have like hundreds of data points across thousands of stores, sometimes it's really hard to keep track of what's actually going on or if certain anomalies jump out in the data. So I actually got to use some of those tech skills and automation skills I learned in the first project that I was working on to build an automated report such that the data scientists that were working on that team and on that project mm -hmm. could quickly, and also the consultants as well, could quickly see like, oh, we have a data issue right there. Like the model needs to fix this, this, and that. So um, that was a really cool opportunity using, so the first project I got to use some Python, PySpark, and also our um, internal tool of uh, Agatha as well. And now in the second project, I got to use some R as, as well. So I'm getting a lot of uh, flavors of technology across the project pool. That's fantastic. So Tyler, what's next for you? Will you be on your current team to stay? Uh, yeah, so actually, um, so the third project I worked on there was the, um, an on-site monetization, which is ultimately where I got placed uh, at the end of the project pool. Mm -hmm. So uh, the on-site monetization team lives in the uh, Kroger Precision Marketing World. KPM. And, yep. yep, KPM. And basically there I'm uh, doing a lot of work with um, analyzing what are called product listing ads and trying to understand if, for example, uh, a household clicks on an ad, like what is the journey from there? Do they do multiple clicking and, and so forth and then make a purchase? Or do they, like what, is, what are the general patterns and trends we see there um, with the on-site uh, monetized ad space. So gotcha. yeah, okay. I'm going to stick in there for now. That's good. Unless I, right. I learn, I'm liking, I'm liking it so far. So we'll see how it continues to go. Well, I'm sure they're, they're glad to have you on the team as well. Yeah. So how does your experience in the data science development program compare to that of your peers with other companies? Yeah, I mean, for one, I think the fact that this was like a four month long program, very intensive, like classroom trainings and applied learnings, I, I, I felt that by the end of the program, and I've also talked to some other people who've reached out to me as well, that I can assure them that they will be ready to uh, succeed right off the bat and add value once they're placed on their, their full-time team at the end of these at the end of this program. Um, yeah, so I, I, I just... Sage advice for, for yeah, those coming after you, Yeah, right? definitely. I, I mean, I think, like, I just don't see the level of attention and emphasis on learning that I, I, like, that I quite see here in mm -hmm. terms of... I, I just a lot of a lot of my friends and peers they might have like a week of trainings of some sort and then right. they're like contributing right away. But here you, they really emphasize uh, getting you ready to be the best data science data scientist you can to mm -hmm. jump right off the bat once you get your full time role. So, what tips or advice would you would you give uh, future graduates curious about starting a career in data science? Yeah. So for one, um, learning those tools I was mentioning like Python, mm -hmm. R, SQL, Tableau. Spark, if extra credit, if you can do that too. I think just really exposing yourself to those tools and technologies, and also actually working with some data as well. Um, some there's various websites you can visit to just work with data sets. Use mm -hmm. some of these, you know, these these tools like Python and R. They're they're free open source technologies, so you can you can use those technologies and actually work with data available on the web and just get, being able to get an upper hand yeah, as you approach your yeah, new career. Right? Exactly. So you get a flavor of what it's really like to work in data science and also as you're applying to places, um, it would help to have some talking points like, hey, I, I worked on this project using Python. I built this machine learning model and predicted X. Like, here's what, and you could talk a little bit more about some experience you built using those tools and technologies. Yeah. Great. Well, I hope those listening and viewing uh, who are data scientists to come to be um, take note of your tips and advice. And, and folks, uh, Tyler told you where to find that information. So please take uh, advantage of the web and uh, those open source tools that are available to you. Uh, now, Tyler, uh, it's time for the 8451 lightning round. Uh, where we ask you a series of eight random questions for 51 seconds. You're aware of this. You've listened to the upload, right? Are oh, you yeah. ready? I'm ready. All right, let's go. What's your favorite city in the U.S. besides the one where you live? Ooh, I have to think about that. TBD, I need to see more. Uh, I do like Cincinnati, though. All right, first TBD we've had. At what age do you want to retire? 
Ooh, I'm going to say I won't have the choice by 45. My uh, personal finance professor at Notre Dame taught me a lot about personal finance. Carl Ackerman did a great job. Let's talk after this. What is your favorite thing about 8451's new Chicago office? Oh, the standing desks for everyone, for sure. What's your favorite day of the week? Got to be Friday. Uh, have you ever Instagrammed your food? No, and I don't think I will. <laughs> <laughs> Which one food could you eat for a solid week? People might be surprised, but salad, to be honest. Okay. And uh, what time of the day are you most productive? Either early in the morning or late at night when it's really quiet. Final question. If you were diagnosed with having a phobia, what would it be? That, like, sound when you, like, scratch your fork on, like, a porcelain yeah, plate and yep. it screeches. I, oh, or your tooth, right? I, I, oh. I can't, can't deal with it. All right. Good. How'd we do? Oh, we didn't quite make it. Just barely? That's right. You don't win anything if you win anyway. Ah. So sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we do appreciate you being here, Tyler. I want to thank you for being our guest today. And uh, I'm your host, Dan O'Keefe, and we will see you next time on The Upload. Well, that does it for this special edition of The Upload by 8451. We hope you've enjoyed this episode and have a better understanding of what makes us who we are. Remember to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any of our updates or insights. Until next time, stay curious.